stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. Don't give up. Good morning, the right. Democrats. Good morning, Democrats. I'm so pleased to be with you again at convention. This, as you heard, is my fifth convention as speaker and over 20th uh, as a delegate. And I want to take a moment to thank my colleagues in the Assembly for their dedication to our values and our party, particularly Majority Leader Tony Atkins. We'll soon be very proud to call her Madam Speaker. Tony is a passionate voice for California's women, a dedicated leader for our party, and I'm so honored to have served with her these last four years, and I know she'll be a powerful advocate for our values as speaker. And of course, I want to thank each of you for the tremendous work that you do up and down our state and the great partnership you've had with us these last four years for our candidates, for our party, but most importantly for the values that bind us together as Democrats. Conventions come and go, public service comes and goes, but our values remain. Values that we know are restoring the California dream. We see the results with every new jobs report and every forecast of our revenue. And when it comes to the campaigns that we've waged together, we know that our values have been tested. But because of our hard work together, our values have prevailed every single time in every corner of the state. On November 1, 2008, there were 48 Democrats in the Assembly. Today, there are 55. We fought hard for those seven seats. We did the hard work of organizing and engaging. And those seven districts and that were once crimson red are now a bright shade of blue. In the nine counties of the Bay Area, there is not one single Republican left in state office. And right here in Los Angeles, the Republicans cling to a tenuous hold on just two districts that barely even touch our county. We're expanding the map everywhere. The northern Sacramento suburbs, Republican held for decades, now have sent Dr. Richard Pan and Ken Cooley to the Assembly. In Kern County and in Kings County, we broke a string of Republican victories and sent Rudy Salas to the State Assembly. In Riverside County, where Democrats were once an endangered species, we've elected Jose Medina to the Assembly, General Roth to the Senate, and we elected Mark Takano as California's first openly gay member of Congress. Now, those were all the seats that people thought were possible. And when folks said there was no way we could get to a supermajority of 54 seats, we proved them wrong. In Orange County, in the heart and soul of Red California, in the heart and soul of Red California, we came together with the Republicans not even seeing us coming, and we elected Sharon Quirk Silva to get us to the supermajority of 54. We weren't supposed to be able to get that done, but that wasn't enough. The day before the legislature was sworn in, at 2.45 in the afternoon, we got the call that the hard work in the high desert in Palmdale and Lancaster paid off, and we elected Steve Fox as the 55th Democrat. In doing so, it was historically red regions of California that gave us our first supermajorities in both houses since 1883, and the first progressive supermajority in history. In California, red to blue is not a slogan, it is our reality. Our pathway, our pathway to victory now is the same it was, as it was then. It is to make stark the choices for voters, Republican rhetoric versus Democratic results. We have a powerful story to tell of the real progress we've created in California. 
The Republicans will talk about opportunities for the middle class, and that's because talk is all they have. Democrats will point to the hundreds of thousands of students who will be able to afford college because of the middle class scholarship. We'll point to the two million Californians who can finally have access to affordable health care because of covered California and the expansion of Medicaid that I offered. We will point, we will holler, and we will bang the drums for the minimum wage increase we passed that will give millions of Californians of every stripe a long overdue raise. Now, you'll hear Republicans talk about their favorite people. They will talk about the corporations that they think are people. Or what the rest of us know is the reality, the billionaires whose only expertise is in outsourcing American jobs to foreign countries. We'll talk about the job creation policies we've enacted. From my first day as Speaker through today, Democratic policies have helped create more than one million new private sector jobs right here in California. We've, we've passed tax credits that are helping 21st century industries like biotechnology and green energy emerge and thrive in California. And we've reinvigorated core industries like construction. We see the proof of our success in creating quality, high-paying jobs with every worker building a Tesla in Fremont, California and with every unionized construction worker building the lead certified Wilshire Grand Towers just a few blocks from here. And when Republicans talk and talk and talk about fiscal responsibility, we'll let our multi-billion dollar reserve speak for itself. Let's be clear. Republican proposals for tax cuts for the super rich are not fiscally responsible. Cutting people off food stamps, job training assistance, or child care is not fiscally responsible. Shutting down, shutting down the entire federal government, threatening to default on the federal debt, causing the first downgrade in the federal government's credit rating in history is not only fiscally irresponsible, it's colossally reckless. These, these are the same folks who used to go on Fox News and gleefully compare California to Greece, who used to predict our imminent collapse. But after the last four years, it's clear they need a refresher course on fiscal responsibility, and California Democrats are happy to provide it. We've turned, we've turned a decade of multi-billion dollar deficits into multi-billion dollar reserves. And we've done it while we've upgraded the creditworthiness of the state twice. We've done it in a way that decreased the cost of financing our government last year alone by $480 million and allowed us to reinvest in higher education, $125 million for UC, $125 million for CSU, and $300 million for our community college. That is fiscally responsible. Passing a real rainy day fund is fiscally responsible. Investing in the success for our middle class and for all Californians is not only fiscally responsible, it's morally imperative. The days of the Greco-Californian comparison are over. Fox News was wrong. Far from collapsing, the California comeback is driving the national recovery. When we tell our story, when we tell our story, the voters, we must be absolutely clear about what Democrats offer. Opportunity, Democrats are creating it. Fiscal responsibility, Democrats are living it. And dignity and respect for every Californian, Democrats are the only ones on the field. Nowhere is this clearer than when it comes to women of California. Just look at what we've been able to do together. We're the only state in the union where we've increased access to reproductive health care, not once, but twice in the last two years. And as I've said, we've expanded health care for everyone. We fought for equal pay for equal work, and we're fighting hard to protect children and working mothers and childcare, health, 
After Governor Schwarzenegger vetoed funding for child care programs, I cut the Assembly's own operating budget and partnered with first five operations across the country, across the state, to put the money there and keep those child care centers open. We were, not, we were not about to leave those kids on their own or force their parents out of work. And even when our own governor eliminated the funding for the Commission on the Status of Women and Girls, we cut the Assembly's operating budget again to keep that voice for California's women up and running. We stand up for California's women because we stand for dignity and respect for every person in our state. You see that clearly in the laws we fight for. LGBT Californians see it, that it was Democrats that banned conversion therapy. It was Democrats that insisted that transgender students be recognized for who they are and protected in our schools. The dreamers who grew up in our communities, attend our schools, pledge allegiance to our flags, and want nothing more than to be the Americans they know they could be. Look at the issue of immigration reform, and the choice they see between the two parties is summed up in three words. For Republicans, it's us versus them. For Democrats, it's e pluribus unum. When future generations look back at this critical era of global climate change, one thing will be absolutely clear. Democrats were the ones who stood up and fought for a sustainable future through policies like carbon cap and trade and unprecedented standards on renewable energy. And we know we've got a lot more work to do, including making sure that we have strong, strong legislation around environmental justice and that we bring fracking to an end for good in California. We have a powerful story to tell, a story that is defining progress for the 21st century. California's very first senator was nicknamed the Pathfinder. And for more than 160 years, that's been our charge as a state, to show the rest of the country the way forward. We're not just preparing for campaign victories. We're blazing a trail for 49 other states to follow. We're showing the rest of the country the way forward. We're proving that California Democrats are the pathfinders for progress in the 21st century. Thank you.